Hello, this is Leo Bray on behalf of Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center in Palm Springs. Visit us online at urbanyoga.org or Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center on Facebook to check out the schedule of daily classes, often on Zoom, more and more often in person in Palm Springs if you're local. And stop by the tip jar as well when you visit us online where you can make contributions to our online offerings. We're live on Zoom, we're up on YouTube, if you're not local to join us in person. Today, this is gonna be a shorter segment. I'm gonna do some, walk you through some warrior poses and some variations of warrior poses and some flows. Some of uh, what I like to call dancing warrior poses. Not like I came up with that name. That's a common name for these flows where we go from one pose back and forth to another. So for simplicity's sake, we'll go numerically, start with warrior one. Warrior one, I'll give a couple different views. So starting with head on view, one foot forward, other foot back. The front knee, you want to bend the front knee a bit. You don't want to send the front knee forward past your ankle. And I'll talk about that again when I get the side view. So the front leg is bent, the back leg is long. You're grounding into the ball of the front foot and the outer edge of the back foot. So feel for that grounding. That's me adjusting my feet and legs so I feel nicely grounded. We want to build the pose from the ground up for stability and strength. Torso is upright, so the shoulders are above the hips. Then we bring the arms up, but relax the shoulders down. So we don't want punching like this, compression up in the shoulders. So arms are up within shoulders, just let your shoulders melt down away from your ears a little bit. And then you turn your pinkies in towards each other. I realize I've got a camera placement issue here. <laughs> Step back a little bit so you can see my hands, right? So my hands are like this, pinkies in towards each other, so my palms face back. So it's arms up, shoulders down a bit, pinkies in. This is warrior one. Now from the side, It looks like this. So you could have your knee this bent, maybe just this bent. What's going on with your knees? How strong do your legs feel today? You can figure that out for yourself. Feel for that grounding. Remember, start from the ground up. Grounding the ball of the front foot, outer edge of the back foot. Back foot's at about a 45 degree angle, which you can see better from here. <laughs> and Notice that the feet are parallel, not one behind the other. So a mat is a handy way to gauge that. Mats are handy for other reasons, but if you bring your feet near the edges of the mat, use up a lot of the width of your mat. And sometimes we say, think of your feet on railroad tracks, one foot for each track in Warrior One and Warrior Two, you put both feet on the same track. So I talked about not sending this knee too far forward, not past where the ankle is. Is this just showing you what not to do? This is hyperextension. You can hurt your knee. You don't want to ever do that when your center of gravity is up this high. If this back knee was down on the ground, center of gravity is lower. I'm working on some lunges and stretching my hips. It's okay to send the knee further forward when I don't have all that weight up here. And now in the side view, there's how the torso would be shoulders above hips. There's the arms up and the shoulders down a bit. And pinkies in, you probably can't see my hands. You can't see my hands because I need to go certain way. That's warrior one. So some variations that we can do from here is if you bring your elbows down to your rib cage and your forearms parallel to the ground like this, we can do this arm movement, actually get a front view on this one. Keeping the elbows in close, inhale, move the hands apart, exhale, bring them to the front again. And this is great for the middle of your back, the muscles between the shoulder blades and below the shoulder blades. 
this is a very good movement to do. And the whole time you're doing this, of course, you're using your legs, you're nicely grounded, keeping yourself upright and balanced. So that's one variation that we can do. Another thing you can do is to bring your hands up and then together. So if you're indoors, a handy reference, unintended, Handy reference might be to point your hands at where the wall meets the ceiling, maybe not necessarily depending on the size of the room and how close you are to the wall, but let's say the angle is not all that important. You want to put your hands together at an angle, something like that. It's not vertical, it's not horizontal, it's somewhere above 45. I'm not going to measure that. How would I, right? And from here, we can do a flow. So this will be the first warrior dance. We go from this warrior one variation to what's called humble warrior. That goes like this. On an exhale, bow towards your knee, reach your hand back, palms down. Now, maybe you don't come this low, that's okay. Think of going towards your knee, not to your knee. Now come up, exhale, come down. And you know, if it feels good to spend some extra time, a breath or two here, Maybe you do that. Maybe you want to challenge yourself more. Maybe you want to challenge yourself less. Maybe you don't go as slow. Exhaling to go down. Inhaling to come up. And as you move your arms up and down, keeping them in line with where your body is facing. Stable and strong. So the grounding in the feet, the strength in the legs keeps this movement lined up so the back stays safe, so I don't tip over. You know, we all fall sometimes, that's part of practice. And the knee, as your knee moves, now your lower body should be pretty still here. It'll move a bit. Think of your knee staying in line with your ankle, whether it's above your ankle or behind your ankle. You don't want your knee to go in like that or out like that, that's less stable and safe. Notice now my foot's starting to lift. Keeping the foot firmly grounded, keeping the knee in this line, in this plane. It's gonna be the safest, stablest thing for you as you move. But any of these variations, you isolate and strengthen the core by keeping the lower body fairly still, letting those core muscles do the work. And of course, the weight of the arms helps the momentum and the movement. So there's some movement in this knee. Even as it goes forward and back a bit, it stays in line with the ankle. Now, for the sake of keeping myself in balance a bit, taking off a piece of jewelry that doesn't want to stay in place, <laughs> I'll switch my orientation here. Have my right foot forward, now I'll work with having my left foot forward. So warrior one, railroad tracks, 45 degree angle. For warrior two, and we'll often to transition from this, we just put our hands on our hips. That's a stabilizing move. Give your hands something to do, so to speak. But it helps steady you too. You pivot the back foot open further so the feet are perpendicular, bring it in line behind the front foot. So you might think of if you just went from the, the train to the monorail. And here, I like to deepen my stance, do what's right for your body. People are proportioned differently. Maybe you've got longer arms and legs, shorter arms and legs. For me, this more distance between the feet is what feels good for warrior two. Now, in warrior two, Certainly the knee can be right above the ankle or anywhere behind whatever degree of bend in the knee works for you. And still we don't want to send the knee further forward than that ankle. Still grounding in the ball of the front foot, still grounding in the outer edge of the back foot. That block is in the way of seeing my foot. <laughs> so that's the lower body. Grounding. This is the strongest standing pose for your lower body. So it's a very firm stance, powerful warrior two. Shoulders are above the hips. Reach your arms out to the sides, roughly parallel to the ground. 
And then you turn your head about 90 degrees, look over the front fingertips, so the fingertips that are above the bent knee. So the back leg, like Warrior One, the back leg is long and strong, and the front leg is bent. And sometimes here, it's nice to open the shoulders with this rotational move. In forest yoga, they call it tight wing. Inhale, rotate back. Exhale, rotate forward. And if it helps you get more rotation, you can bend your elbows a little or a lot. And this rolls your shoulder blades up and down your back. If you can feel that, if you can't, it takes a while to sort of tune into that sensation, but that's what's happening, whether you feel it or not. Shoulder blades are wonderfully mobile. And shoulder muscles and neck are areas where we store excessive tension. It's nice to help open the heart space and loosen some of that stuff up. So there's warrior two. This is how it would look head on. So from head on, you, can't see, you can see that the back foot is behind the front foot. I'm too close to the wall. Didn't you my cell phone to put the arm up? But anyway, that's, that's the front view. Most of what I'm going to do now, the side view will be better. I just keep switching sides as my body talks to me. We'll do all these things. Typically in the flow of a class, you do each of these things both ways. So you do warrior two like this, and you do warrior two like that. And same thing with warrior one. So doing everything twice, keeping yourself balanced out. Then there's what we call reverse warrior. Turn the front palm up towards the ceiling. Lower body stays still to isolate the core. Inhale, tip back and reach up. So the front hand is up above the face. You can look up at your hand. Options here, this back hand might just rest lightly on your leg. Don't press on your leg and use your arm to hold yourself up. You can hurt your knee that way too. The leg is long, but the knee is not locked. Just shy of being locked. So maybe the hand just rests here. Alternately, this hand can press to your hip for support, or you can bring your arm to your lower back. We call this a half bind. A full bind is when you have like, both arms and both hands involved. Half bind is one. So just to show that a bit. So this thing is called reverse warrior. So that's reverse warrior, half bind, or hand on hip. Or hand hanging by the leg. So, warrior two, inhale, reverse four, and stay there as long as you like. It's nice in the first one to spend a few breaths. Exhale, tip forward, reach forward, lower body in the same position the whole time. Front arm rests lightly on the thigh. You might pick it up to make sure you're not dumping your weight in your arm and dumping your weight in your leg because you want to use the core. This arm is arching overhead in the direction of that opposite foot, right? If you want to play more and work more with your core, you could reach this arm forward like this. Some folks call this beach ball pose, like you're passing your friend beach ball. Or you can reach your arm out to the side. I like the energy of this variation. For whatever reason, this feels great to me. So I like to play with that. You can go back and forth and make a little flow there, right? So this is another warrior dance from here to reverse warrior. Inhale, tip back, reach up. Exhale, tip forward, reach forward. Now I've been looking at the camera because I'm talking to you. What you want to do is track the front hand with your eyes. As you go back and as you come forward, now help keep your neck Lined up, and remember the back hand might come to the hip as you dance. Might come to the half bind as you dance, or it might just dangle. So the variations aren't just for the static pose, but for the flow as well. Now from warrior two, here he switches sides again. There's another dance, we'll go from warrior two to Gentle warrior. That goes like this. Inhale, raise your arms straight in front leg, turn your head 90 degrees. Exhale, bend your knee, lower your arms, turn your head 90 degrees the other way. So from warrior two, inhale, to gentle warrior. Exhale to warrior two. 
And just follow your breath. Maybe your breaths are shorter than this. Maybe they're longer. But don't lock either knee. Let the breath and the movement flow smoothly and continuously. Or maybe you pause. Maybe you want to hold your humble warrior for an extra breath or more than one extra breath. Hold your warrior too. For extra breaths if you like as well. Time to come out of that and drink some water because it's hot here. So we've done warrior one, some variation, some dancing. Warrior two, some variation, some dancing. There's one more, warrior three. Now, there's not really any common dancing warrior flow that involves warrior three. There are different ways to come into warrior three. The most accessible, maybe most easeful, gentle way involves props, blocks. If you don't have blocks, you could use a, a foam roller standing on end. You could use a chair or a stool. You could also use the wall, be over by the wall, or you have one hand to the wall. If you do have blocks, you stand them on the tallest setting about shoulder width apart. So like this. So we start out sort of in a, this boxy shape. So I've got my shoulders, above my elbows, above my wrists. I've got my hips above my knees, above my ankles. And depending on the length of your arms and how steady you feel with your legs, maybe you go to that hand position, maybe you come to fingertips. Just be wary of the fact that blocks on a tall setting can be tipping. So as you lean on it, you can tip your block over, you don't want to crash. So, the really super gentle way to come into Warrior Three is from here, shift your weight into your hands and one way, don't lock the knee. Inhale, reach the other foot up and back. Think of stepping on the wall like you want to make a footprint. So the toes are pointing down, like by aiming the whole sole of the foot at the wall, reaching back through the heel. So this is a nice opening move here in the frontal hip. And this, of course, is some great core strength and some pretty active use of the arms and that standing leg. Now, maybe you use the props less. Maybe one hand comes to your heart, maybe both, or to your chair or your wall, whatever you're using. You can always put your foot down and pick it up again, start over any time. You can also play with different variations here. Maybe your hands reach back or to the sides or up to the front. And that could be just one hand, maybe one stays on the block and one plays around, one stays on the wall or the chair or whatever you're using. And as I said, it's not really a dance. If you feel very strong and want to play a bit, you can bend and lengthen the standing leg and sort of float up and down like this. So picture your body parallel to the ground. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but imagine it is. Keep reaching back, thinking about making that footprint on the wall. Keep breathing. And if you're keeping your hands here, pressing them together, pressing them to your sternum, it helps steady the whole thing. And when you want to come out, exhale, lower your foot, and you can do that with or without your support, your choice. And usually before you do the other side, it's nice to slow stand, shake things out. Especially the leg you were standing on. Feels good to shake that up, keep it standing. So that's how we'll do it with support. If you're pretty strong in the legs and pretty stable, you know that you have good core strength and good balance. Or maybe you just want more of a challenge. Maybe you don't feel those things, but you want to challenge yourself more. Maybe you just stay within arm's length of a wall. And a more active way to come into Warrior Three is from a lunge. So we come into a high lunge. Feet are more like on railroad tracks. They don't have to be as wide as warrior one taking up the whole mat. Roughly about the same width apart as your hip sockets are, keeping joints in line. So from a high lunge here, myself a little more room to transition. 
So from a high lunge, starting up here, torso upright, hands by the heart, we're gonna bounce and like pop forward. So push off the back foot, shifting weight out of the back foot and more weight into the front foot. And I never truly know how many bounces it's gonna take. But as it bounces up and forward, the weight of the torso tips forward, lifting the back leg up and reach back, think about that footprint. And there we are in the same shape. And we have the same options here. Now, you can come into this in a more active way. And still, I could have set my blocks up here. They're out of reach. But I could put the blocks there before I come into my lunge. And then I have the option to grab my blocks. I don't have the option now. I have my wall I can grab. I can drop the back foot and start over. You have the same options you can perform here. You might play with binds, right? Double bind with arms. Interlace fingers, waist back, open the heart. Maybe turn the hands around. Nope, that doesn't feel good today. But feel free to explore options. Come out and start over as many times as you want. Stay up there as long as you want. Make sure you breathe in. When you're ready to come out, exhale, lower your foot. Now stand, shake as needed. Some of us can't resist a bit of a dance. Just need to do more than shake your legs sometimes. So that's all for today. This is one of our shorter offerings. Students have let us know that when they come to YouTube to enjoy our videos, they like to have some shorter ones. Sometimes they're not able to carve an hour out of the day for practice, but they want some practice. Maybe they want some focused work, just uh, yeah, some more focused attention on something. So there's our Warrior One, Warrior Two, Warrior Three video for you. Again, I'm Leo Bray. On behalf of Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center in Palm Springs, you won't see me in Palm Springs. I'm in Cozumel, Mexico. But plenty of great teachers that you can see in Palm Springs, outdoors at Ruth Hardy Park, been at the tent at Desert Ace Project, and soon moving back into the studio. I'm sure people are very excited about moving into the studio having some indoor classes. Again, check out details on the web, urbanyoga.org, Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center on Facebook. Folks who join us on Zoom or on YouTube, please remember to stop by the tip jar and make contributions. You can make recurring contributions as well. It doesn't have to just be a one-time tip. You can set it up to come into the accounts regularly. Which is nice if you're attending regularly, contribute regularly. The light within me sees and honors the light within you. Thank you for tuning in. Namaste. Well.